Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Benjamin and you are watching Sartorial Styles. In this video we focus on one of the most worn accessories in formal menswear, the necktie. I'll talk about its history, about the situation today and about different fabrics, styles and construction methods. Let's go! A necktie, also known as a tie, is a long piece of fabric hanging around the neck. It is tied under the shirt collar and knotted at the throat. Ties can be worn by men and women. They are more commonly seen in menswear though. They are often worn with a collared button-up shirt and a suit or a formal jacket, a sacapetto, as Demetrios Levi would say. Other possible options of neckwear are bow ties, ascots and scarves. The history of the necktie starts in the 17th century, where it was worn by Croatian mercenaries serving in France. This is where the original name cravat comes from. Neckwear gained popularity when King Louis XIV started wearing a lace cravat. Many people followed his example and the European tradition of wearing pieces of fabric around your neck was born. At this time, the shape of the fabric was way more large and fleshy. During the Industrial Revolution, the typical shape of the necktie as we know it today was born. People wanted to have a piece of fabric around their neck that was easy to tie and would not come undone during work. From the 1920s until today, the shape was pretty much untouched and the tie is a staple in a man's formal wardrobe. What changed over time though was the width of the necktie. The length was pretty much untouched since the 1920s on the other hand. From the 1920s to the 1950s, wide ties were very popular, sometimes up to 11 cm. In 1951, a very skinny shaped necktie was introduced. From that point on, the most common width changed every 10 to 20 years. Today we are seeing many slim ties in current fashion, but also a movement of elegant people wearing white ties as they were worn in the 1920s and 1930s. The standard length is 140cm, shorter and longer options are available though. Widths between 7 to 9cm are most popular today. In the 19th and 20th century, ties became a popular membership sign, in particular in England. Clubs, schools and other institutions had ties with certain patterns assigned to their organization. For this purpose, ties with a regimental stripe pattern are most common. Another interesting topic to look at is fabric. The most common choice for neckties is silk in many different variations. Silk twill, grenadine silk, shantung silk and ancient meadow silk are just a few options to start with. Different fabrics represent different formalities, with cotton and wool being less formal, smooth silk being the most formal. Linen and cotton might be used for summer ties in particular, while wool flannel and even tweed are popular in the winter months. Many cheap ties are made of polyester. I don't really recommend wearing them though, because the fabric is very shiny and has a cheap appearance people will notice. Now we have talked about length, width, shape and fabric of neckties. Comparable to different canvassing methods on a suit, ties are constructed in different ways. Most common and cost effective is the threefold construction. The outer fabric is flapped over and held together by a stitch or multiple stitches, mostly made by hand. Many manufacturers put a lining into their threefold ties to give them more shape and structure. Unlined options are available as well, they are more fluid and flexible. Unlined threefold ties are mostly made of heavier weight fabrics. There is another important distinction to make. Untipped ties versus self-tipped ties. A tie being untipped is usually a sign of quality. It requires more of the original fabric and it takes a lot more time to finish the tie. Besides the traditional threefold tie, other constructions are around today. Most commonly seen are fivefold ties and sevenfold ties. These ties are not necessarily better, it just requires more skill and craftsmanship to produce them. In addition, it is more wasteful because more fabric has to be used. Some people claim sevenfold ties drape better than regular threefold ties. In my experience, the exact opposite is the case though. 
I even have this strictly limited 12-fold tie by Calabrese Napoli in my wardrobe. At this point it's just about flexing the skill of the manufacturer and not about creating a superior product. If you enjoy the craftsmanship and are willing to spend a lot more, go for 7-fold ties. In my opinion, regular 3-fold ties do the exact same job while being more cost and resource effective. Neckties can be knotted in many different techniques. Very popular are the foreign hand knot, the half windsor and the full windsor. Some knots are symmetrical, others are not. Some knots are very wide and large, others sleek and small. What you prefer depends on your taste, on the thickness of the fabric and on the shirt collar you are wearing. Wider spread collars look better with wider knots. Classic collars look better with smaller knots. I made a whole video about different tie knots and pocket square folds that you can find up there in the corner. And that's it, focus on the necktie. I hope you enjoyed this video and were able to learn something new. I really love to wear neckties and I would be happy if you were inspired to wear one as well. Up there I link my focus on video about pocket squares and up there you can find my video about combining tie knots and pocket square folds featuring Oliver Wicks. Down there you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click on the bell icon if you want to be notified about new videos on classic menswear. Have a nice time and see you next week.